my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive. Six, seven, eight, feeling great. Nine, I'm gonna shine. Life is good. I'm doing fine. Ten, gonna do it right and do it again. Yeah. I look into the sky with all the beautiful color, but there's more than just for me. So gonna share it with another. I got to show, to give, let out. I want to sing and shout. Take a look and see a beautiful morning. Been in here and people are roaring with laughter. So it's a dirty show, though. Right? Well, it's clean it's dirt. <laughs> you have here the best Thank of the you. best. Yes. So we have many celebrities here. The Holly Madison come over here, and the Usher come over here many often, sure. and the Paris Hilton come here. Boy, I'm dating myself, but it's okay. <laughs> Nobody else will. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Vegas. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. If you think about that, I mean, go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. And there's one thing we're focused on here at St. Jude, and that's beating this thing. Welcome to That's So Vegas. I'm your host, Christine McKellar, here in the fabulous, famous Las Vegas Arts District. I have a wonderful, wonderful guest today. This man, if, the, if your albums could talk, <laughs> your CDs, <laughs> sitting here with me in the studio is none other than King Arison. There's so much going on about you, I don't even hardly know where to start. So I'm going to start with a, something a lot of people are familiar with, which is a James Bond movie, Thunderball. And you were living in Nassau at the time when they were filming the movie, and that was your big break because there's this very dramatic scene. And those of you who remember, and those if you don't, go look this up. You've just got to see this. But there's a villain behind a curtain, and you're playing your bongos, and you have your band there, and it has King Arison on the front of the, the stage. And as the gun is coming out, pointing to James Bond, you're Congo playing. Everything that you were doing there just fed into the drama and the tension. And it's really amazing. And it gets you, the viewer, of the just, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? So um, were you aware that the gun was coming out of the curtain? Had you read the script? Did you know? Or was this all pieced together like they sometimes do in Hollywood? You know, it, uh, I was hired uh, specifically for that uh, scene. Uh -huh. uh, I knew the plot already, and uh, the reason I went into the frenzy, it was to alert Bond that something was about to happen. That's why he looked back at me in a strange way, uh -huh. and then he saw the gun. So the more I crescendo, mm -hmm. the more tense the scene got, and it's that's amazing. when uh, when I reached to a certain dimension in the, the drumming. He, he spinned the girl around. I know, it was so rude of him. <laughs> <laughs> she gets shot in the back. Yeah. <laughs> that was one part. And then he goes and sets her down and says, oh, she's just resting. She's, or she's yeah, just she's resting. just dead. You mind if my friend sit this out? She's just she's dead. Just, she's just dead. Yeah. So, inter yeah. Well, which a lot of people didn't know that it's the first Bond movie and probably the only Bond movie to win an Academy Award for staging oh. was that scene. Uh -huh. which was set up by a guy named Ken Adams, who was the stage designer, for set designer for that piece. You know, that just proves how important the music is in any movie. You know, sometimes it's, it's just a part of the background, but that was really incredible. And probably they were really using that then, you know, at the time using the music and the score to build and create the atmosphere mm -hmm. and the scene. And, well, if you watch the scene from the beginning when the girl, Lulu, is dancing yes. out front. Beautiful. Uh, it's my music that I set up to get the tension started from there because I already knew what we had to do uh, as mm -hmm. far as my band was concerned. One of the great stories about that section is that uh, if you notice on the plaque on the drums, it only has one R and one S in my name spelling. Now the reason for that was because uh, with the complete banner that the designer had made up, we left it up overnight after one of the rehearsals, after one of the shoots, and the heat lamp burned it up. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so when I came in to shoot mm -hmm. 
the scene again that evening, the following evening, and I saw the thing all burned up. This is well, I ain't nothing we can do about it. We can't make a new sign in, you know, such a uh, short space of time. And so, with the budget, uh, yeah. I said, well, just leave it to me. So I went and cut out the pieces that were fit and put the sign together because I wanted my name in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let nothing stop you, right? <laughs> because your last name is spelt interesting. It's two R's and two S's. I was very careful with that when yeah. I was putting together some of the information yeah. on you, you know, that. Right. Um, but, oh, wow, that is really, uh, again, it's just a tremendous example of how music creates that that tension and energy and conversely it can also you have set i mean with your cd and the 40 years you've been playing with neil diamond and the covers that you've done with other motown i wanted mm -hmm. to talk definitely about that because you've played with legends um i mean michael jackson the jackson five the temptations mm -hmm. um you name it you've played with them as a matter of fact uh, Marvin Gaye, uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes, and one of my favorites, the Four Tops. It's yeah, just I love them, yeah. what an incredible repertoire there, what a portfolio. Yeah, well, Barry Gotti and uh, Ray Singleton uh, chart me down as the unsung hero of Motown. That's a wonderful tribute and yeah. you, well deserved. I mean, you're so talented. Um, I understood from a friend that you have an interesting story about Michael Jackson or the Jackson Five or. Well, well when he was a boy, the first time I met him, he was so loving. He just came and oh. sat down in my lap, and what a beautiful kid he was. Really. Know? That's when I did the uh, first thing I did for them was called "I Want You Back." Then was the ABC album and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff that I did. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the music carefully, I had a lot to do with the influence of how the rhythm was emulated in that piece of music. And uh, I just became one of those people that they always call uh -huh. for the session when, when they were doing one. And drums have always fascinated me, and uh, one of my former stepsons is a drummer, and he's very talented. But you can't really write a musical score for drums, can you? I mean, like with a flute or the piano, you have the notes and the score. Do you just, as you go, or is this part of your style well, that you interpret? Well, uh, drum, there, there's music for drums. It's just that uh, I usually tell the arranger on anything that they're arranging for me to play, just give me the first choice on playing feel. Because uh, congas, even regular drums, you can play music because it's written and they have beats. We have notes that we have to take and do things. But when you could feel the thing, it's like making love or kissing a pretty woman. It's <laughs> feel it's not uh you don't count one two three four to hug mm -hmm. you know or right. you gotta feel this and most of the time i've been lucky to uh get my been lucky to get my uh point across by showing the arranger or the conductor this is a feel piece mm, definitely yeah. i can see how that would happen with the guns I mean the guns, the drums. The drums. <laughs> I was looking at your arms going, great guns, no. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. I'd like to give a shout out to my sponsor, the Red Roof Inn, on Paradise Road across from the Hard Rock. You don't want to miss the second segment with King Arison. We're going to have some live music here in the studio. We're going to talk about his wonderful autobiography and a little bit more about his background and his CDs and your tour with Neil Diamond. We'll be right back. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. If you think about that, I mean, go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. And there's one thing we're focused on here at St. Jude, and that's beating this thing. And without further ado, King, take it away.
<laughs> that was something. Thank you so much. I can't, yeah, I could, you know, your hands were almost a blur. Well, thank you for I having me. I can't believe here. the human hand can move that fast. And we were talking about just how the different nuances you create by going from palm to fingertip or different areas all over the Congos. It's wonderful. You really have a very blessed and you're gifted. What a talent. Mm. You have a lot of other things going on too. I mean, you've had, you, re, well, your recent CD, your last CD was My Secret Life. Uh -huh. And that's on your website. And I always want I wanted to ask you what your secrets were. <laughs> <laughs> and there won't be secrets anymore. <laughs> no more secrets. But you've also written your own, you have an autobiography out. Right. And um, that's My Life, My Loves, which mm. is probably an addendum to <laughs> My I'm Secret right. Life. Yeah. You could co combine the two of them. So yeah. was it a challenge for you to go from being a musician and playing to an author writing a book or... Well, I've been writing from I was 19 years old, okay. so it's something I've always done, and uh, so that's about 50 years of writing, and everything that I ever done, I jotted down. So you so journaled I, along the way? Yeah. And so. in the book, um, do you talk about all your experiences playing again, like with the Motown greats, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, and you are still with Neil Diamond after, what, 40 years? 40 years, yeah. And he's embarking on his last world tour. Yeah, so anniversary tour. Yeah. Anniversary tour. I don't know if that would be our last. last. No. Yeah, no. But, uh, and Neil's timeless. Yeah. You know, he really is. He's, how is it playing with him and the band? It's, uh, <clears throat> well... I've been there for so long. He's like my brother, my father, my uncle, my cousin. He's a wonderful guy. Uh huh. Yeah. Family. Yeah. I've always yeah. liked him. I just think he's one of the most talented. And he helped create a whole new wave of music back in the late 60s and 70s. He was around even prior to that. So. Oh, yes. I, I think he's, he's done a lot for music. Uh, he's made a lot of stars who are stars today. Right. By listening to him and trying to copy him and write and be like him. I, and he think, encourages other performers right. too, doesn't he? He's yeah. got a big heart like that. Yeah. So in the book, um, uh, My Life, My Loves, um, are you talking of romantic love or your loves of the different things that, uh, in your life? And I'm talking about my girls. Oh, your girls. <laughs> 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 that, I thought that would fill a bigger book than this. But... Well, that's just the beginning. Oh, this is <laughs> edition number one, <laughs> the first. And you talk a lot with the, the anecdotes of playing with the Motown performers yeah, and people like that. talk about way. most people I've played with, uh -huh. yeah. That's a great cover, by the way. Oh, thank you. I love that yeah. necklace. I know you mentioned earlier it's over 300 years old and it has a very special backstory that unfortunately we don't, we're not going to have time to do. Um, but someday when you come back, we have one more segment, but we're going to talk about a few other things. Um, don't go away. We will be back. I'm sure all of you enjoyed that sample of your incredible talent as much as I did. Quick shout out to the Red Roof Inn. They are pet friendly. Free Wi-Fi. Why keep wanting to say wi -Fi? Five. Right. Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> wi Fi. <laughs> no hi <high> fi. <laughs> Complimentary <laughs> breakfast for guests. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Mm. It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure eighty percent of children with cancer. If you think about that, I mean go back fifty years we were curing twenty to thirty percent. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. And there's one thing we're focused on here at St. Jude, and that's beating this thing. Welcome back to that. So Vegas, this has been an incredible, incredible episode, King, and I'm so happy to have you on the show and, and the demonstrations on the Congos here in our studio. Even the staff was... Um, completely blown away by your talent. It's amazing. I know you've been doing it for 40 years, but it's so fresh and I can see it in your eyes. You still have that energy and the power and mm. love the power. Um, you also have a book out, My Life, My Love, and it's your autobiography. And like you said, it was no big jump or leap for you because you've been journaling and writing since you were about 19. Right. And when I think about what your life represents, you've toured with some of the greatest, you've played with 
people we've lost, like Michael Jackson, and and um, the, you've, you've been with the Four Tops, so you're still with Neil Diamond, who's like family to you, I know that, and he's a wonderful man, and you guys are on the anniversary tour, I hope you come to Vegas. I haven't I hope seen, so. oh, you, tell him I said so. <laughs> uh, Neil's a great guy, he's very talented. He's wonderful, and, yeah. And I could just see where you two would work so well together. So speaking of all the tours you've been on, and, and I can see how you would adapt to each particular genre or each particular star's style because you're interpreting as you go along. You're not just sitting there looking at sheet music. or right. um, You wanted to give a shout out to one of the top jazz performers in the world that you said was kind of... Uh, yeah, the, the late great Cannibal Adderley. Cannibal, yes. <clears throat> whom I met when I was about 23 years old. Uh, You've met them all. And uh, he's, he's taught me a lot about music and about jazz. I've been playing jazz from when I was a young boy. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the few people that showed me the ropes on what jazz was all about. So mm -hmm. I always think of him and give him a place in my heart for being there as a father figure. He was a mentor. So do you think of him when you're playing a lot? Yeah, And I do. some of the, the secrets of the trade, perhaps? That, yes, yeah. But a lot yeah. of it is innate talent. You were just blessed to have those. Uh, yeah, I've been lucky, blessed and lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that brings to mind your website, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, because your website's amazing, and and viewers can find clips and um, uh, samples of my se your secret life, which is about... We're not talking about your secrets because you talk about your girlfriends in the book. <laughs> that was a joke from our previous segment. But it resonates with, uh, you it seems to want to remind people to seize, kind of seize the day. You mentioned on the site, you've written, you know, be loving, uh, live as if today's your last. And, and it's just a real positive, a positive vibe from your site. So is that from a religious uh, philosophy or is that... Uh, I, I think a lot of it is to do with religion, but a lot of it is, uh, I think, giving thanks that, uh, that uh, growing up as a poor boy to reach to a certain height in life and, and without uh, too much, uh, what's the word, uh, problems or malfunctions or setbacks. Mm -hmm. I haven't had many of those. And even when I did, I paid no attention to it. I continue on my way because I had a destination and a uh, place in my mind and heart that I was going. And I didn't allow anything to deter me from that, uh, that, that, that step forward that I was looking for. So was your goal, have you reached your goal, would you say, in life? Or? I, my my way is to continue living your dream and don't let anyone or anything stop you from making that move. Uh, because as I always say, the devil is busy and he's jealous too. Uh -huh. You know, I don't allow him to get in my way at all. Uh -huh. You know, uh, because I have a destination and I'm on the march to some place. You know, like I've gotten the the blessing and the beat of the drums to, to take me through where I want to go. That's really amazing. And again, that is on your site, that gratitude thing. And I, I think you're right. The Lord or the universe loves a, a, a grateful heart. Right. And giving back to people, you know, uh, sharing your talents and tips like Cannonball did with you. It's all part of the great mosaic of life, I would think. Yes, I yeah. do that, yeah. That's really wonderful. So you live in Vegas now. Yes, I've been in Vegas for 30 years. I didn't know you lived here for 30 years. Yeah. But, but you're always on tour, so how would anybody well, know? We've yeah, I'm, I'm always out. That's what I love about Vegas. Unlike uh, California when I live in Beverly Hills, everybody know when you go and everybody know when you come. Right. In Vegas, nobody knows me, nobody want to know me, and <laughs> I go and come and uh, because all I do is live here. I don't work here. And that's kind of nice being anonymous sometimes, isn't it? I know Michael Jackson in an interview had commented on how he never could, he couldn't even go to the park or the store right. because of being so famous. So fame does have a, its up and down um, 
sides. Yeah, well, it's just uh, a... fortunate for me, I never got that famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I can go anywhere. And, yeah, and you can yeah. take your gift with you anywhere too. It's yeah. portable. That's really right. nice. Yeah. Is there okay? So, in a recap of your whole life, I mean, you have written book a book now. You've been journaling your whole life. You have a number of CDs out, and they are wonderful. Uh, some of these, it's just you have original songs on some and others they are yeah um, most of them are original uh -huh. I, I wrote 90 percent of them uh -huh. there's a couple of covered songs uh, right. because i love leonard cohen's music i did a couple of his amazing he, man wasn't he, he? Was what a, a fantastic writer and gifted good storyteller uh-huh yeah so you like telling story with the, the congos the drums well that's how i started playing uh singing to myself in the jungles just me and the birds and my voice. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a singer. Mm -hmm. I'm a good storyteller. And the drums helped me to go through uh, delivering my story. Yeah, in a lot of cultures, drums were used tribally to communicate. Yeah. Yeah, across mm -hmm. the vast yeah. areas. Well, that's, a, that's the beginning of music anyhow, drums. Yes, it is. It's a and, heart, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Without that what do you have you have nothing right yeah, yeah you've got to have rhythm that's and, right and tempo um is there anything on a bucket list that you have that you haven't done yet that you would like to do maybe you're not gonna do it but it's something that you you've thought of doing like parachuting or <laughs> you know I, I i think i've done just about everything but before i go i am gonna write and star in my own movie Nice. Yeah. That would be wonderful. What would that title be? Have you thought of that yet? Uh, that's the way life goes. That's it. All your secrets, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your life, your loves, and that's the way love goes. Well, it's time to say goodbye, which I really don't like doing. I've just so thoroughly enjoyed having you on the show. And again, thank you so much for bringing a couple of pieces of equipment. And it was really a treat well, thank to you be able to watch me. you right yeah. this up close. It was yeah. just fantastic. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It was a great pleasure. Thanks again. We'll be back next week. Don't forget, that's So Vegas TV here in the fabulous downtown Las Vegas area, the Las Vegas Arts District. See you in a week. Thank you.